Greetings, we'll cover a few details about Wilhelm Röntgen and his life in a succinct manner. Here is a short rundown of his early years, education, career, persona, notable works, honors and accolades, legacy and demise. The discovery of electromagnetic radiation in the wavelength range, known as X-rays or Röntgen rays, on November 8, 1895, by German mechanical engineer and scientist, Wilhelm Conrad Röntgen led, to his receipt of the first Nobel Prize in Physics in 1901. In 2004, the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, IUPAC, designated element 111, Röntgenium, after Röntgen. This radioactive element has a number of unstable isotopes. In his honor, the Röntgen unit of measurement was also created. Also known as, Wilhelm Conrad Röntgen, famous as, the discovery of X-rays or Röntgen rays. Born, March 27, 1845, Lenop, Remscheid, Germany. Died, February 10, 1923, Munich, Germany. Father, Friedrich Conrad Röntgen. Mother, Charlotta Contanza Frowine. Spouse, Anna Bertha Ludwig. Children, Josephine Bertha Ludwig. Nationality, German. Education, University of Zurich, ETH Zurich, Institute of Martinus Hermann van Dorn. Discoveries, Inventions, Discovered X-rays. His parents were textile dealer, Friedrich Conrad Röntgen and his wife, Charlotte Constanz Frowine. He was born on March 27, 1845, in Lenop, Germany. Their only child was him. He attended a private boarding school in Midtelland, as well as the public schools in Oppeldorn, for his elementary and secondary schooling. He enrolled in the Utrecht Technical School in 1862, but after a while he was expelled, for engaging in infantile mischief that includes, creating a caricature of an unpopular teacher. He was permitted, to enroll in the University of Utrecht in 1865, but only as an irregular student. He took classes in a variety of areas, such as analysis, physics, and chemistry, but he didn't seem to be focused on becoming a regular student. He immediately filed for admission to the Federal Polytechnic Institute in Zurich after learning that he could be accepted there and aced the required tests. He started studying mechanical engineering as a result, and in 1868 he graduated. He continued his studies after receiving his degree at the University of Zurich, where he earned his PhD in physics in 1869. He won Professor August Kuhn's favor as a student at the institution. Röntgen started teaching at the University of Strasbourg in 1874. He was appointed a professor at the Hohenheim Academy of Agriculture in Württemberg in 1875. In 1876, he returned to Strasbourg as a professor of physics, and in 1879, he was assigned to the University of Gießen's Chair of Physics by special request of the Bavarian government, he was given the physics chair, at the University of Würzburg in 1888, and the University of Munich in 1900. Prior to the start of World War I, he obtained a position, at Columbia University in New York City, and purchased transatlantic tickets. For the whole of his career, he stayed in Munich. In 1895, Röntgen was studying the effects of electrical discharges on various types of vacuum tube equipment in his lab at the Würzburg Physical Institute of the University of Würzburg. These apparatuses were developed by Heinrich Hertz, Johann Hittorf, William Crookes, Nikola Tesla, and Philip von Leonard. Early in November, he was conducting an experiment with one of Leonard's tubes in which a cardboard cover had been added to shield the aluminium from being harmed by the cathode ray's powerful electrostatic field, but a thin aluminium window had been inserted to allow the cathode rays to exit the tube. Although Röntgen was aware that the cardboard covering prevented light from escaping, he noticed that, when a little cardboard screen was placed next to the aluminium window, the cathode ray's invisible nature caused it to glow fluorescently. Röntgen hypothesis that similar fluorescent effect might also be produced by the Crookshitorf tube, which had a much thicker glass wall than the Leonard tube. 
On November 8, 1895, late in the afternoon, Röntgen was determined to put his theory to the test. He made a black cardboard cover with care, just as he had done with the Leonard tube. In order to create an electrostatic charge, he placed electrodes on a Rumkorf coil and covered the Kruxhitorf tube with cardboard. In order to test the opacity of his cardboard cover, Röntgen dimmed the room before, assembling the barium platino cyanide screen to test his theory. After confirming that the cap was light tight by running, the Rumkorf coil charged through the tube, he turned to start the experiment's next stage. At this point, Röntgen caught a glimpse of a faint shimmering, coming from a bench a short distance from the tube. He attempted many more discharges to confirm and observed the same shimmering each time. After lighting a match, he saw the shimmering was coming from the spot where he was going to use the next barium platino cyanide screen. Röntgen hypothesis that a novel type of radiation might be to blame. He used the weekend to repeat his trials and make his initial notes, since November 8th was a Friday. The following week saw him living and working in his laboratory, as he studied a variety of the new rays characteristics and gave them the temporary name X-rays by utilizing the mathematical symbol X for the unknown. The name Röntgen rays was given to the new radiation in numerous languages. In order to test the various materials' abilities to block the rays, Röntgen once placed a little piece of lead in the path of an electrical discharge. Thus, Röntgen witnessed the creation of radiography, his own phantom skeleton shimmering on the barium cyanide screen. He subsequently said that he made the decision to continue his research undercover, at this point out of concern for his reputation as a scientist if his findings turned out to be false. A radiograph of his wife Anna Bertha's hand was taken utilizing X-rays about six weeks following his discovery. I have seen my death, she said upon seeing her skeleton. At a later public speech, he captured a better image of his buddy, Albert von Kolliker's hand. On December 28, 1895, the original version of Röntgen's paper, on a new kind of rays, was released. An Austrian newspaper announced Röntgen's discovery of a novel form of radiation on January 5, 1896. Anna Bertha Ludwig, to whom Röntgen was married for 47 years, passed away in 1919, at the age of 80. They first connected in 1866, at Zoom Grunen Glass, Anna's father's café in Zurich. The delay between their engagement in 1869 and their wedding in Oppeldorn, Netherlands, on July 7, 1872, was caused by the fact that Anna was six years older than Wilhelm and his father did not approve of her advanced age or lowly upbringing. Financial issues existed from the start of their marriage because Röntgen's family support had stopped. After the death of Josephine Bertha Ludwig's father, Anna's sole sibling, in 1887, they reared one child, adopting her at the age of six. After his father's passing, he received a two million Reichsmark inheritance. For moral reasons, Röntgen opposed patenting his inventions and believed that they should be freely available to the public. After being awarded his Nobel Prize, Röntgen gave the University of Würzburg's research department 50,000 Swedish krona. He accepted the honorary doctorate of medicine, but he declined an offer of Niederer Adelstadel, a nobiliary particle that includes the preposition von, meaning of. This was done since von Röntgen is a nobiliary particle. Insolvent after World War I due to inflation, Röntgen spent his final years at his country home in Weilheim, close to Munich. His discovery of X-rays, a type of electromagnetic radiation that is released when matter is struck by speeding electrons, is unquestionably his most important contribution. He saw a lighting of a screen covered in barium platino cyanide while performing an experiment on cathode rays. Electric current was carried via gases at extremely low pressure through a well-covered discharge tube. Additionally, he learned that the rays could expose a photographic plate. Using this information, he created an image of his wife's hand and examined 
the very transparency of her bones, flesh, and wedding band. He then gave it the term X-rays, and explained, that they are created, when cathode rays strike material objects. Röntgen received the first Nobel Prize in Physics, in 1901. According to the official statement, the honor was given, in acknowledgement of the great contributions, he has offered by the discovery of the magnificent rays, subsequently, named after him. The 50,000 Swedish Krona Prize, that Röntgen received as part of his Nobel Prize was given, to the University of Würzburg to support research. In 1900, Röntgen also received, the Barnard Medal for Meritorious Service to Science. Together with Philip Leonard, he received, the Matucci and Rumford Medals in 1896. They were awarded it for their, studies of the phenomena, that emerged outside of a severely depleted tube, where an electrical discharge was occurring. For developing X-rays, he was awarded, the, Elliott Cresson Medal, in 1897. He received, Columbia University's, Barnard Medal, in 1900, in his honor. He was awarded, the coveted, Helmholtz Medal, in 1919. In his honor, the IUPAC designated, Element 111 as, Rentgenium, RG, in 2004. The Deutsches Röntgen Museum is located, in Remscheid Lenop, 40 kilometers east of Dusseldorf, the city where Röntgen, was born. A non-profit organization in Würzburg, where he made his X-ray discovery, looks after his laboratory and conducts, visits of the Röntgen Memorial Site. World Radiography Day, this annual celebration promotes, the use of medical imaging in contemporary healthcare. Every year on November 8, which also happens, to be the anniversary of Röntgen's discovery, it is observed. Wilhelm Röntgen is honored, by the name Röntgen Peak in Antarctica. Due to intestinal cancer, he passed away in Munich, Germany, on February 10, 1923. His bones were interred in Alter Friedho F in the German city of Gießen. All of his personal and professional correspondence, was shredded upon his passing in accordance, with his wishes.